Short Questions, Short Answers by Torah Teacher Ariel and eBible. Copyright Tate's Torah Ministries, 2015. All rights reserved. Here's our question for tonight. Is the new perspective on Paul biblical? All right, let's look at my answer. Pauline literature uh, falls into two overall schools of thought. There's Lutheran Reformation Paul and New Perspective on Paul. And we're going to focus on New Perspective for the most part tonight. Here's my answer. The New Perspectives on Paul, we could put a plural there if we wanted to, are a more recent school of biblical thought that represents a break from Lutheran slash Reformation Paul or Old Paul in an effort to place Paul more sharply focused within the specific first century religious Jewish communities that existed among. To be sure, most Bible students would readily agree that circumcision, works of the law, and under the law are all topics of vital importance when studying Pauline literature. Wouldn't you agree? Particularly those topics as you're kind of navigating through Romans and Galatians. I personally think that it is theologically pertinent that we locate these central topics together within the pattern of religion in first century Israel by briefly examining the theological concepts that NPP has become famous for, namely this phrase covenantal nomism and justification. If, as I maintain, first century Israel did not define works of the law, i.e. Torah observance, as legalism, the way the church defines legalism in the popular Lutheran slash Reformation view of Paul, how then exactly did she conceptualize and define her law keeping? What was her motive for remaining so devoted to the Torah and subsequently to the covenants? Did she believe her Torah observance granted her salvation? This is one of the important questions that we have to wrestle with. Or perhaps did she instead believe her Torah observance helped her to maintain a status of non-idolater, viz. justified existing covenant member, since her initial and ongoing salvation was believed to have been gained by belonging to the people group of Israel, and therefore such maintenance was necessary to stay saved. How did Israel interact with her Torah? Was it for becoming saved, or was it to maintenance salvation? The seminal work that introduced a term now known as covenantal nomism, and indeed this new perspective to mainstream Christianity, was published in 1977 under the title Paul and Palestinian Judaism, written by E.P. Sanders, a Christian and New Testament scholar. A significant quote from Theopedia.com is going to explain this. E.P. Sanders is known for coining the term covenantal nomism. This term is essential to the NPP view, as Sanders argues that this is the pattern of religion found in Second Temple and Rabbinic Judaism. The term itself is used as shorthand, that is, a shortened term used to describe a larger idea. So Sanders' definition is this. Briefly put, Covenantal nomism is the view that one's place in God's plan is established on the basis of the covenant and that the covenant requires as the proper response of man his obedience to his commandments while providing means of atonement for transgression. And that's quoted from uh, Sanders' book on page 75. This is important because it has huge implications for one's understanding of first century Judaism and thus for one's inter- interpretation of how Paul interacted with it. If covenantal nomism is true, then when Jews spoke of obeying obeying commandments or when they required strict obedience of themselves and fellow Jews, it was because they were keeping the covenant was not out of legalism. Now, I know that statement is challenging. We're going to unpack that in my study tonight. I lifted all that from Theopedia.com. Indeed, for the last 30 or 40 years, ever since biblical scholars began noticing serious inconsistencies with the characterizations of rabbinic Judaism by Lutheran Paul proponents, as well as the anachronistic portrayal of Paul's supposed ambivalence in regards to Judaism and to her relevance, this radical new perspective on Paul has been on the rise. Craig L. Blomberg, professor of New Testament at Denver Seminary in Colorado speaks of this new perspective as a new look at Paul's writings. Let's look at uh, Blomberg's quote here. Put simply, the last 25 years of Pauline scholarship has come to see the so-called new look on Paul become the reigning paradigm. Contrary to classic Reformation thought, Paul was not a scrupulous Jew increasingly frustrated with his inability to keep the law perfectly and thus merit God's favor. Indeed, early first century Palestinian Judaism was a religion of covenantal nomism. 
What does he mean by that? He's going to explain himself here in a moment, so don't worry if these terms are new to you. What is covenant nomism and things like that? We'll flesh all of that out. Jews understood they were already right with God by virtue of birth into the unique covenant God had made with his elect people Israel. The role of obedience to the law was one of staying saved, not getting saved, and was not too different from Paul's concept of faith working itself out through love per Galatians 5, 6. The major difference between Paul and the Judaism of his day then for Sanders and the new look is the acceptance of Jesus as the promised Messiah, not a contrast between grace and works righteousness. And that entire quote was lifted from www.denverseminary.edu. There's an article there. For more on this topic of Lutheran Paul versus new perspective on Paul, I invite you to follow my What's on Paul's Mind YouTube channel playlist and pay special attention to the first six videos and lists, such as What's on Paul's Mind intro video. We've got the Christian view, Messianic view, and the new perspective on Paul view, parts one and two. Lutheran Paul versus new perspective on Paul, parts one and two. And then the Sanders works of the law and righteousness in Paul. And there's going to be a link here in this video uh, that you can click to access the plays where each video uh, averages about five minutes in length. So I, you should be able to actually watch them back to back in one sitting if you wish. Right? What's on Paul's mind? Short clips from my lengthy Galatians study. All right, so what are our conclusions for this uh, study? So which view presents the more accurate view on Paul? Is it Luther's Paul or is it Paul within Judaism, the NPP new perspective on Paul? What's my opinion? I am of the belief that both views offer valuable insights into the historically accurate Paul, but the careful student of Scripture must always, always return to Scripture for his final authoritative answers. And that's just basically a no-brainer, right? Let the Bible be your final guide on these matters. However, since the Bible is not only inspired text but also a part of human history, we would do well to not so easily dismiss the latest earnest research into the field of Pauline studies simply because it is new. Here's something new and you think, oh, trying to disrupt the old, upset the apple cart. Don't think that way. In the end, if our goal is to get Paul right, it is important to apply historiographical rigor, including self-awareness of our own interpretive interests, which we ought to be willing to subordinate to outcomes that we might not actually prefer. Theological interest in Paul's voice should be conducted with respect for the cross-cultural nature of the historical discipline required for his later interpreters. Check out my podcasts, which are available on iTunes. You can search for me in the store under the search term Ariel Hanavi. But if you prefer to watch your theology, check out my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell for notifications. New content is added weekly or even daily.